headlines. His Majesty visits southern and eastern districts to inspect COVID-19 preparedness and response measures. Leaders of SARC countries meet through video conference to discuss ways to tackle COVID-19. And all travelers to be quarantined despite travel history and health status. Khus Zampo, welcome to BBS News. I'm Sunam Pem. His Majesty the King visited Finsling, Ngunglam and Mongar to inspect the preparedness and response measures in place against the spread of the global pandemic of COVID-19. His Majesty granted an audience to officials of Mongar, Tashiansi, Tashigang and Linsi in Mongar today and held discussions on pre preparations in place in Eastern Bhutan. Before arriving in the East in the second round second round of royal tours along the Southern Belt, His Majesty held discussions with officials from Jem and Pemagasal in Ngangnam. His Majesty also visited various hospitals and health facilities and spoke with frontline officials serving at border checkpoints in Finsling. Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Ring joined other SARC leaders in a video conference yesterday to discuss and coordinate tackling the COVID-19 outbreak in the region. In the meeting, the Indian Prime Minister proposed creating a COVID-19 emergency fund. Leaders of all eight member countries attended the video conference. The Indian Prime Minister said it could be based on voluntary contributions from the member countries. Prime Minister Modi said India would start with an initial offer of 10 million US dollars for this fund. I propose we create a COVID-19 emergency fund. This could be based on voluntary contributions from all of us. India can start with an initial offer of 10 million US dollars for this fund. Any of us can use the fund to meet the cost of immediate actions. Our foreign secretaries through our embassies can coordinate quickly to finalize the utilization of this fund. The Indian Prime Minister shared India's experiences so far and ongoing efforts in combating the spread of the coronavirus. He said India is currently assembling a rapid response team of doctors and specialists who will be on standby and sent to other SARC countries if required. Lenchun Dr. Lotus Ring welcomed the setting up of the COVID-19 relief fund. Lenchun also highlighted Bhutan's first case and how it was tackled with His Majesty leading the coordination effort. Lenchun also thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for initiating the video conference. I would like to thank Prime Minister Modi for your excellent leadership to bring all of us together because togetherness is required at all times but when the whole world is fighting one common disease that we cannot see with our naked eyes I think it's very important that all of us come together and leave behind our differences and number two I think uh, it is very important that we communicate very clearly on this communicate between all the leaders of the world communicate between central government with uh, local government communicate with the health planners and the people of the nations. So I think uh, this is very timely. Other SARC leaders also shared their COVID-19 status in their countries. On Friday, the Indian Prime Minister tweeted that leaders of the SARC nations could come together to chalk out a strong strategy to fight the virus and together set an example to the world while contributing to a healthier planet. Shoni Dama for BBS News. The Health Ministry will be setting up a laboratory testing facility in Mongar for COVID-19 within the next two days. This, the Health Minister says, is in preparation for the worst case scenario, that is, if multiple cases of COVID-19 are reported across the country in the coming days. If there are cases of multiple outbreaks throughout the country, severely ill patients will be airlifted either to Mongar Regional Referral Hospital or to Thimpu for intensive care. 
This, the health minister shared, is because of the lack of resources and expertise in healthcare centers in other districts. In case we have cases that require intensive care, we do not have adequate expertise and resources in the health care centers across the nation. In such circumstances, we will airlift the patient to either Thimphu or Mongol Regional Referral Hospital for intensive care. So we are planning to deploy a team of expertise each for these two hospitals. We will set up a laboratory testing facility along with ICU at Mongol for the eastern districts. The ministry has also identified a team of five specialists with the National Referral Hospital to study clinical management of COVID-19 if the situation worsens. We will consult experts and specialists in Singapore, America and India to consult ways for clinical management of the disease. There will be a pool of experts who will make sure the rest of the specialists in the districts also know the clinical management of the disease in the worst case scenario. Also in preparation for the worst case scenario, the ministry's technical advisory group will be visiting hospitals across all 20 districts for two weeks starting Wednesday to inspect the preparation works and to study resource requirements. Game for BBC News. Henceforth, all travelers entering Bhutan will be quarantined in designated quarantine facilities for two weeks. Only minors and patients returning from treatment overseas will be allowed to stay quarantined at home after an undertaking is signed with the parents or guardian. Such measures, according to the health minister, are to ensure better prevention of the spread of the coronavirus. Earlier, travelers entering Bhutan were quarantined based on travel history and health status. However, the health minister said there have been many cases of people hiding their travel history. The health ministry therefore decided to quarantine all travelers. The health minister said quarantining travelers entering Bhutan from southern borders are challenging as many try to hide their travel history. No, we have incidents in, in, in Jehangla. People are coming from, you know, say Nepal, Budgaya. You know, they just send their luggage with a car and then they go across the border and they cross and they say, oh, I've just been to the vegetable market. But then after a few times we hear that, oh, they are actually coming not from the vegetable market, but they are actually coming having spent, uh, you know, a few days uh, or weeks in, in other part of the country. The health minister added they are also planning to start a bus service for travelers arriving from Gohati so that everyone can be taken to the quarantine facility. Day workers are exempted from being quarantined. However, strategies would change if there is an outbreak in those bordering towns. Meanwhile, house quarantine for minors and patients will be approved upon detailed inspection of the house and will be monitored by health officials daily. The health minister said such quarantine measures are taken up although it would cost huge expenditure because prevention is very important. If you look at the WHO guideline international recommendation, we are taking extreme precautions. Even quarantine, WHO recommendation is home quarantine. But we are saying, my God, public immediately. We don't want to land up like in countries where you have massive outbreak. We are saying, totally prevent. So much prevention is good. So this is where we are putting the effort in. The health minister shared quarantining a person cost 1,000 yuan a day just for food. With support from private individuals, she says the government is trying its best to provide good facilities in the quarantine centers. Gilatim for BBS News. In the performance audit report of road maintenance works carried out between 2013 and 2018, the Royal Audit Authority found that road maintenance was not given importance as required. The Department of Roads and the regional offices experienced administrative limitations in its road maintenance planning and record keeping. The Department of Roads carries out three types of maintenance interventions based on routine, periodic and monsoon restoration works.
The report revealed that the current road sector master plan does not provide adequate strategies to effectively manage periodic maintenance works in the country. Periodic maintenance is a group of activities which can normally be predicted and planned and are carried out periodically such as resurfacing works. During the review, it was found that there was more than 70% of incomplete periodic maintenance works for primary and secondary national highways. Thus, the Royal Audit Authority recommended the Department of Roads to develop a periodic maintenance plan that will help to estimate costs and come up with long-term plans. The review also found that the Department of Roads lacked proper maintenance planning, prioritization of roads for maintenance, and assessment of challenges and achievements. This slowed down making prompt decisions and improvements in performing their maintenance operations. For that reason, the Royal Audit Authority proposed to develop a comprehensive information management system. Furthermore, the Audit Authority suggested setting up coordination and collaboration amongst relevant agencies during emergency situations for road maintenance, which at the moment is lacking. The report also revealed inadequacies in hiring of machineries and equipment, leading to ineffective process of hiring. The Audit Authority suggested the Department to make the practices uniform across all regional offices. Currently, the Department of Roads maintains more than 4,500 kilometers of roads in the country. Sunam Pem for BBS News. Hydroponic farming could be the next level for agriculture in Bhutan. Currently, the Agriculture Research and Development Center in Mongar is carrying a field research on growing high-value crops using the technology. Hydroponic, by definition, is a method of growing plants in water-based nutrient-rich solution. The center is growing lettuce for its research. It has adopted two techniques of hydroponic, nutrient film technique and deep flow technique. In hydroponics, uh Usually here, so we look at two systems. So this is called NF uh, Tila. So this is Newton Film Technology. Uh, this is done in a five. Uh, uh, it's uh, automated. So every five uh, minutes, the uh, Newton circulates uh, within this pipe. Uh, so it gets uh, so that all the plants get the uniform uh, nutrients. Uh, so it's all automated, and we don't need to to buy manual. Then the other one is the uh, deep flow technology is stand on the floor. Compared to the conventional method of growing crops on soil, the new technique uses nutrients more effectively and is not labor intensive as it is operated through an automated system. Uh, if you don't have the soil, or, I mean the land, uh, this is the one method we can do. And also you can practice in like urban, peri-urban areas. And if you do in hydroponics, lab, you can do year-round, for example, outside we need to base on the season. We, can, we have to cultivate in a season, but here we can do around the year. So that is one advantage. And also, we can produce in a shorter duration compared to the outside. For example, if it takes three, two to three months, here it takes just one to two months. The center is carrying out the trial inside a greenhouse equipped with the automated system for maintaining the required humidity and temperature. We have different components. This is uh, just growth chamber. La. Then we have like uh, automatic system. La. We can also do manually, but here we have the automatic system. We have, for instance, uh, like a temperature sensor, then uh, um, humidity sensor. So, for example, when the temperature exceeds 35 degrees Celsius, then it automatically, then it, the uh, fans get on. on la. So it gets started, then it uh, extracts the, the heat uh, from inside. Uh, so it's uh, just to maintain the uh, I mean the uh, balance uh, of heat. If successful, the Agriculture Research and Development Center will raise awareness and train interested youths and entrepreneurs on hydroponic system. The European Union and the International Fund for Agriculture Development financed the research project worth one million euro. This is Sishidoji for Sanam Sering in Mongar. High quality United FC is through to the finals of the second edition of the Bhutan Super League 2020. They defeated Tensung FC in the semi finals. Eight teams from Thimpu, Poro, Punakha, and Fensling took part in the country's second division league that began on 6th February.
In the first semi-finals on Saturday, high-quality United FC came back from behind to defeat Tensung FC 3-1. The two teams qualified for the semi-finals after finishing in the top two places of the league table. Despite the loss, Tensung FC will get another shot to book a place in the finals. This is following the Bhutan Football Federation's amendment in the league's qualification system made in 2018. It acknowledges the hard work and achievement of earning the top two spots of the league table. Tensung FC will now face Paro United FC which qualified for the second semi-final after defeating Druk Stars FC by a goal yesterday. The final of the Bhutan Super League 2020 is scheduled for this Saturday. Meanwhile, the top five clubs of the league, High Quality United FC, Tensung FC, Paro United FC, Druk Stars FC and BFF Academy under 17 team have qualified for the country's top domestic league, Bhutan Premier League. On the other hand, the bottom three teams are relegated to the Zonkak League. This is Parson Luji for BBS News. A recap of our main stories. His Majesty visits southern and eastern districts to inspect COVID-19 preparedness and response measures. Leaders of SARC countries meet through video conference to discuss ways to tackle COVID-19. And all travelers to be quarantined despite travel history and health status. That's all from the newsroom. Thank you for joining us.